Hey, hey, and welcome back to another video of learning Java 2D game programming. So in our last video, we fixed the sizes of our collision boxes, since before they were way too large and we made them a lot smaller. However, there are still some issues and I need to turn the debug rendering back on. It was inside of the game class. Here we go. So set that to true and we will render our debug things, which currently only means the collision boxes. So I'm just gonna walk down here and then I'll show you. If you can see, and maybe you can't because uh, on YouTube this will be very small, but currently when our NPCs are walking into us, we're telling them to stop, but their collision boxes are overlapping ours just by a little bit, but they're overlapping ours. And that's because of we check if we are colliding without checking with the motion that will be applied. So we check the collision with the position that we already have, and then we apply the motion. So I think I mentioned this briefly in the first video I made two videos ago. Um, we want to check the collision with the motion. So let's do that first. If you find your moving entity class, I'll just show it. So this is what I'm talking about. So first we are handling the motion. So we're basically saying that maybe we want to move to the right and the bottom. So uh, I guess southeast. And we have a speed of two. So we'll move two pixels and then we check our collision, but we're checking it with our current position, right? And then we are applying the position afterwards. So the next time we get here, we've applied the position. We're already two pixels inside of the um, collision box that we can't be two pixels inside of. And then we check the collision and then we say, yeah, we're totally colliding. So you need to stop. So at that point, you are inside of the other collision box and they will never be able to get out of it because it will always say that they are colliding. So they will always have stop called on them. All right, the way we fix it is that inside of here, when we get the collision box, we wanna get the position with the motion applied. The problem is we don't wanna apply the motion to our position because then we've already applied it, right? So whatever we do, um, we can't say stop because the motion is already applied. Also, when we get here, we're going to apply it again. So what we are going to do is we're going to copy this position and test using this copy. So the first thing I want to do is make a position in here that will be temporary and call it position with motion. And we're going to make a helper method inside of position, a static method. So make one called copy of and send in your own position. And let's generate this. All right, so th this will just return a new position with the X and the Y that the one we send in have. All right, so back here. Now with our copied position uh, with motion, apply the motion and use this position when we create the rectangle. So just doing this should check the next uh, position or the position with motion, of course. And now they should never be able to overlap. They should stop before they overlap. And I don't know if you could see from, from these guys, but um, they're not overlapping now, which is exactly what we want. Well, they overlap each other, of course, but uh, they only check with the player and they're not overlapping with the player. So they've stopped before. So if we told them to turn around and walk another way, they could. Also, here's another issue that we're going to fix. So currently they can't slide off of us, right? We are not checking each direction separately. We only say that if you're going to overlap in any way, stop. So that means that they can't um, press left but also up at the same time and only move up because the obstacle is only to the left but it will check with both of the axes applied and say that oh you're gonna collide so you can't move 
So we're going to fix this. We need to test each axis separately. Also, this looks fun. Ha! <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, so the way that we're doing this is... Sorry, I need to think for just a moment. If we go to the NPC, currently we're just saying stop, but I would like to ask it something like will collide x and pass in what we want to test with and will collide y maybe. So this is how I would want to do it and inside of the stop that means we want to take in uh, so booleans whether we should stop in each axis. So if we just um, put this on several rows so we can write some longer expressions here. I want to say if it says that we should stop uh, x and let's use a ternary expression. So if we should stop x then give it a zero. But if we should not then give it the x that we already have. All right so do the same for the y. Okay. Yes, I think I'm happy with that. However, we need to make these. So go into your moving entity and let's make those methods. So that was a public boolean will collide x. And you take in a game object that is other. So let's start by getting the collision box of that other object. Other box. Other get collision box. And now we want we want to do something like this. So first of all, position with x applied maybe. I know it's a very long um, variable name, but I prefer long variable names that are easy to understand so that when you get back to your code or if someone else watches your code, they should be able to read it and understand what's going on. So first of all, let's do this position dot. We need to copy our position so we don't uh, do any mutation of the position that is ours that we actually use for our for our game object. So make a copy of the position. And then I would like to say apply x based on the motion. And let's just generate this. So apply x based on a motion. That will basically mean <laughs> vector, no, sorry. Vector is what we get in. We only have the x, of course. So x plus equals motion get vector get x. Okay, that's it. And let's make the same for the y. So apply y. And the y will be motion get vector get y. Okay, so before we had an apply that applies the entire motion, but now we have separate applies for each axis so that we can test them separately. Uh, right, so let's also, this isn't quite done yet. Let's make return and let's make another helper method. So collision box of I'd like to make, uh, which will take a position. So a position with X applied and collision box size. And let's check that right it doesn't understand what we return yet so just make this and it shouldn't be a boolean it should be a collision box so this is just a helper method to create a box so return a new collision box with a new rectangle inside which uses the position with x applied in x position with x applied in y and then let's just actually sorry Let's rename these position and size. There we go. So size, get width, and size, get height. And close that off. All right, now that we have this helper method, this will be easy. So just check if it collides with the other box. All right, and let's make an equivalent for the Y. 
with collide y position with with y applied apply y all right so now we have these methods that we can test test each axis individually and it's still a bit sad and that's because we use stop up here so now we need to tell it which axes to stop for and and we of course want it to be both just put in true and true all right uh i think this is it let's try it out so if we just move into where they'll walk onto us now you can see that if they are walking diagonally when they hit us, then they slide off of us. Of course, if they're just walking in one direction, they're still going to stop. But now they can slide off of us. So if they have to stop in one direction, at least they don't stop in all directions. right? So this is probably what we want. We can walk towards something that we can't walk through, but we can also just sort of slide on it. All right. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Hey, do.